the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. May we take a moment to welcome one another. To prepare our hearts for this Eucharist, let us again humbly ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the source of all peace and comfort. Lord, have mercy. You forgive us and raise us up whenever we turn to you. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, empower us to bring comfort to others. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, our Father, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, grant, we pray, for your servants that listening to the voice of your Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him one day, he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the ancient one took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair, hair in his head was as white as wool. His thrones were flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. We'll be seeing number 137 in the gather book. 137.
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. But he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <laughs> Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And then from the cloud there came a voice that said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. First, uh, let me say thank you. Uh, last weekend, while I was away, uh, Father Steve Rodriguez was here for our annual missionary appeal. I don't know if you know how that works, but annually, once a year, 
the diocese assigns a missionary to come into each parish in the diocese and make an appeal on behalf of their need. And so he was here for his country of India. Normally when that happens, we collect on a second collection between 65 and $107,000. I wanna say thank you because last week you all gave $15,000. And so he, Father Steve, got a hold of my cell phone number and he called me literally every single day this week to tell me thank you. So let me pass it on to you and I think he was able to share with you where that contribution would go. So thank you so much. So I was away last weekend, first weekend. I've been able to be off in a long, long time. I was off for my birthday. Saturday was my birthday. I turned 55. Many of us will remember when that... Thank you. Many of us will remember when that was the speed limit, way back when. Actually, the first time I was at St. Jude, it was 55. I just remember that. But uh, my cousin has a camp down in Grand Isle, so four or five of us went down there. We had a great time. We went fishing. It was perfect. Perfect weather, perfect everything. The Gulf, I'd never seen the Gulf like this before. This may sound boring, but I'm going to connect it to the gospel. It was, I love listening to the waves, but there were no waves. It was like glass. It was so smooth. So each morning we walked out into the surf and we went surf fishing. We actually caught fish. And I was kind of like Peter in the gospel. Oh God, how good it is to be here. Let this last a little longer. And it was just a real relaxing weekend. I do want to say that if you have never been lucky enough to see the Grand Isle Tarpon Rodeo Parade, keep it that way. Anyway, thanks for your prayers while I was away. It was a great weekend and for all your birthday wishes. When I got back, one of the things I did this week that really struck me as a wonderful little moment, unexpected, didn't see it coming. I was asked to go over to the LSU campus uh, to a coffee shop there and meet with a group of guys who were all in a fraternity together and they had just returned from Colorado where they'd gone for a fraternity retreat. It wasn't a fun trip, it was a retreat. And they wanted to tell me all about it. So we're sitting there and we're drinking coffee and they were laughing a little bit because one of the guys in the group, when he went on retreat, he didn't have his cell phone. He didn't have his cell phone because right before he went, he lost it. And what I found interesting was he was not upset that he lost it. And it just kind of got me thinking, for us to be able to tune into God more clearly, we have to tune some things out. And we have to do certain things to make that happen. For him, it was an accident and it happened. Today is a feast that only comes around on a Sunday once every seven years. We have the feast every year, but it rarely falls on a Sunday. It's called the Transfiguration, and you just heard in the gospel what the Transfiguration is. Now, there are two things that were meant to take away from this encounter in the lives of the disciples. Here's one, and here's what I'd ask us to focus on today. It was a moment in which Jesus wanted to have one more opportunity because he is on his way to Jerusalem where he would suffer and die. Now, we're not in that time of the year liturgically. We're in the summer. But he was on his way to his suffering and his death. And he took him to this out-of-the-way place. He had Moses. He had Elijah. To show them that he was the fulfillment of everything. So that's the big part of this moment. But for us today, the real challenge comes from what the voice from heaven said to Peter. Listen to him. Peter was one often, if you look at all the moments in his life, when he was tempted to complicate the moment. Now here he is in this miraculous moment, which is probably beyond our comprehension. And Jesus is revealing himself to them, to the disciples, in this, this new way, this glorious way. Only them, only three of them. And Peter says, what's the first thing he said? Well, we want to build three booths, as one gospel says, or today we want to erect three tents. Right away, innocently, he wanted to complicate the moment. What all Jesus wanted him to do, okay, was to sit and be in his presence and to listen. That's all he wanted. And so the voice said, listen to him. 
For us to tune God in more clearly, we have to tune out the distractions, whatever they may be. Since we're starting school this week, which I know some people are very happy about and some not so much, but this time of year might be a good time to ask ourselves, during this coming week, what can I do to be better at that? Tuning out the distractions, tuning in more clearly on the voice of God, just in day-to-day living. How can I be better at that? We pray together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is the door and the door of God, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Let us then bring our prayers today to our loving God, whose Son awaits us in heavenly glory. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For a church more closely conformed every day to the likeness of Christ, as we extend his mission to every corner of the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all weapons of war and destruction might be transformed into tools for peace and harmony. We pray to the Lord. For all the baptized, as we strive to continue to be people with whom God is well pleased, we pray to the Lord. For the students, teachers, and administrators who prepare for another school year, may they seek wisdom as they prepare to return to their schools, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they share in the glory of the Son, we pray to the Lord and for the other intentions that we now offer in silence. O God, we ask you today to transform us into the likeness of your Son, that we may help to further establish your kingdom here on earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I'll be singing number 500 in the Missal. 500 in the Missal. Yeah. 
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our almighty and loving Father. <laughs> Sanctify and bless, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stain of sin. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, O God our Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. He revealed his glory in the presence of his chosen disciples today and fill the greatest splendor with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity so that the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what's so wonderfully shown forth first in he our head and so with the angels and the saints and the whole company of heaven we glorify your name and we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, here and spread throughout the world, and bring us all to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the apostles, the saints, and all those who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May we share with each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But I want to see you. We'll be singing 649 in the gather book 649 Of course. 
Let us pray. May this heavenly nourishment we have received transform us, O Lord, into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration. Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Hope you have a great evening. I know that there are different start dates for school, but we begin here on Wednesday. Our faculty be with us on Monday, so please keep us in your prayers. Again, after the 1130 Mass this morning, if you'd like to join us on the deck, weather permitting, if not, we'll move it across the parking lot. It's a social gathering and a chance to meet our new principal, Ms. Gardner, if you'd like to join us with your children. Have a great evening. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll be singing number 658 in the Gather Book. 658 in the Gather Book. You are sold for the earth, O people, so for the kingdom of God.